you can trust me. Why have you not spoken to me? Is there a dead lady? That's kind of what happens. Are you all right, Miss Shun? My name is Xiao Shun. This is the proper way to address someone in my country. I do apologize, Xiao Shun. Are you all right? Yes, I am. This is the only place where I can find some kind of serenity. Some way to remember my dear Matthew. Okay. <laughs> Just immediate hint. Xiao Shun couldn't find the strength to leave her husband's tomb. Tell me how your husband died, Xiao Shun. Matthew died of the Spanish flu, like so many others. It's a mundane cause of death these days. But for me, it meant the end of the world. At this time, there is so little medical science can do to defeat this terrible epidemic. I'm truly sorry. The worst thing is not his death, even if it tears me apart. The worst is not to have seen it coming. To have lost him so quickly, even before realizing it. Did he hide his condition from you? Matthew was a smiling type, a, a happy sort. Everything that I am not. Did he laugh at his death to come, or did he not realize what was going to happen? I'll never know. Unless you find a journal somewhere hidden inside your house, which details his very last thoughts up to the moment of his own death. But, obviously, probably didn't happen. The Spanish flu may be the worst disease mankind has ever faced. Why are you blaming yourself? You don't understand. I didn't know he was so sick. I didn't realize the gravity of his situation until it was too late. As harsh as this sounds, we are all equally vulnerable to this awful disease. It can take the strongest man in just a couple of days. I never said goodbye to Matthew. We never realized how bad it was. We laughed about it even. He always made me laugh. Now I don't have enough tears to shed. Uh, that's rough, lady. <laughs> I let my sister marry dust. Ooh, that's a hell of a line to drop on her. No, let's let's talk to her a little bit more. Are you on your own? Do you have any friends or family who you could be with? I have family and friends, but I need to be here alone. One day, maybe, I'll go back to them. But not now. I need silence. And I need sadness. It's worse when you're alone. Sadness can be a terrible trap. We all grieve our own way. Hmm. I'll say it's worse when you're alone. You should not be by yourself. Grief can be a terrible trial. And it's even worse when you're alone. Thank you for your sincere words, Dr. Reed. I sense you trying to help me, even if I don't quite understand why. I'm just a good person, trying to look out for other people. Are you a doctor yourself? Is this why you feel so guilty for not saving your sick husband? The no, fuck? I am not. But I still need to blame someone for Matthew's death. And who else, if not his wife, who did not see it coming? I'm a physician. One of the best in the country. But I was unable to save my own sister, Mary. She died in my arms. Why tell me this? Is it supposed to make me feel better? She will rest in this cemetery forever. And I'll spend eternity hoping that she can forgive me. May I ask what caused the death of your sister? You could say she was also killed by a terrible disease. A disease I have sworn to fight and cure, no matter how long it takes. Thank you for sharing that with me, Dr. Reed. Maybe it's time we start to rebuild our lives, you and I. Yeah, the way that started off was not how I expected that to go at all. <laughs> I let my sister marry down. That was already a weird line already. But the fact that we didn't immediately jump into it was odd. But hey, at least I guess we had a tiny bit of tact. You realize you can't stay here forever, don't you? Eventually, you'll have to leave the cemetery. Why? Why should I go? Since this is the only place I can find peace of mind. Ah, uh, I agree with you. You're not dead. Sorry if I vexed you. 
Hmm. She's not dead. That's my immediate like go to. I wish there was an in between because I understand that like it's one thing to spend her time here, but she is gonna have to leave at some point. Fuck it. But you're not dead. There is a difference between visiting the dead and staying with them. You sound like you're no stranger to the pain I feel. Let's just say I too have a good reason to visit cemeteries at night. Please accept my condolences for your loss then, Dr. Reed. I mean, I told her that my sister's dead, so she should know about that a little bit anyways. You should go home now. I think you're right. Cemeteries are for the dead, for they need silence too. Thank you for your honesty and your wisdom, Dr. Reed. Thank you for your company, Xiaoshun. Take care on the way home. Maybe I'll see you again in Whitechapel. Goodbye for now. Farewell, Xiaoshun. Also, I need to give you a treatment. How do you feel? Physically speaking, I mean. I don't feel good, Dr. Reed. Not at all. You should recover quickly after taking this. Thank you, Doctor. How is the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel these days? My only relief is that my Matthew died before seeing the madness that approaches. I'm afraid we won't survive this trial, Dr. Reed. Goodbye for now. Well, it's the right thing to be afraid of. You can trust me. But, with that said, we won't know until we've persevered. I can't believe I'm doing this. Still having reservations about eating the rats. But they're our lifeblood. So, I wonder if we could, as an overall vampire, just use, say, rats and stuff to satiate the hunger. Uh oh, hey, you almost got me, buddy. A lot of time in vampire lore or vampire media, you have substitute ways for people to satiate the hunger inside. But in this, it doesn't really seem like it too much. Like, we can use rats. Oh, hey, Shadow Ekin. Here, have this. Can't have him attacking me. Ooh, he gave me a good trigger part. That's useful. Anyways, as I was saying, we have, uh... We, we have, say, Lady Ashbury being like, Oh, I need to feed on the dying. But could she have just been eating rats instead of preying on the dying? Or is there a different reason, like... I don't know. I, I, I want that. That's the kind of thing you need explained. In this particular lore. Is it kind of like if you were, say, uh, a vegan, a vegetarian, or, you know, maybe you're not getting your proper nutrients by avoiding meat and things like that. So you need to take supplements. So if I only eat rats, is that, <laughs> is that gonna be bad for us as a vampire? Like we just get sickly and, and not be able to function? Is that why we need to feed on the, the living humans? I'm not fully sure. Anyways. Good evening, hey man. sir. It's me again. Leave me alone, I say, whoever you are. Look, let me in. It cannot be safe for a blind man to live here alone. Let me enter, sir. I swear I mean you no harm. Well, a voice never lies, and yours clearly is the voice of a gentleman. All right, doctor, come on in. Wandering in this part of town at night, you're either brave or a fool. Add uh, uh, a little both. So what is the name of my nocturnal visitor? I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. As I already explained to you, I'm inquiring about the epidemic. Dr. Reed? The eminent surgeon? My god! I'd never have expected a brilliant physician like you to knock on my door. You flatter me, sir. No, sir, I am flattered. I read all your work when I still had my sight. I loved it. I'm Mason Swanborough, by the way. Wow. 
So if I had just told him I'm Jonathan Reed, he might have let me in without me having to vex him. Huh. Here, you look. You seem unwell, sir. Do you need my assistance? Actually, I feel worse than usual. Can you give me something? Yeah. I like how when we do these medical treatments, we'll see them have like a migraine and they're just like, Oh, I feel terrible. Absolutely. It's a migraine. Just say you have a headache or a migraine. I'd be like, oh, yeah, all right, we got something for that. Yes. I can give you a little something that has been proven effective. Thank you, Doctor. But it's like they chose very vague things like, yeah, I just haven't been feeling well. And, oh, we have something that can make you feel better. Just so that way, maybe if they wanted to change it up a little bit, they could. Does someone take care of you in this isolated place? My sister Loretta and I have our daily routine. Every morning and evening she comes by so we can talk and eat. Then she leaves and I stay. Do you not appreciate your sister's visit? Loretta is the best and worst thing that happened to me. And I believe she could say the same thing about me. <laughs> Why is that? Where does your sister go? Well, let's just say... She earns enough money for us both. What's so amusing about that? I won't hide the truth from you. Loretta sells a fake miracle elixir to the sick people of Whitechapel. Yeah, I already knew that it was fake. The Swamboro mi miracle elixir is a con, huh? And apparently I guess enough people buy it to get them, well I wouldn't say well off, but keep them alive. And what else have you learned about me, Mr. Swanborough? I know you assisted Professor Carell in France, and that you invented a new blood transfusion method based on his work. Yes. Those were frustrating but exciting days. I loved it. Yes, the thrill of research and discovery. This is what drives people like us, Dr. Reed. Oh, how I envy you. So, uh, are, are, are you a doctor, or did you want to be a doctor? What's going on, Mr. Swanborough? Oh boy, look at all this stuff. How is the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel these days? I hear them hissing and scratching at my door every night. The sick made mad by the fever. But these walls are thick, and my lock is solid. <laughs> yeah, he does have, like, vampires and shit just chilling outside of his door. This guy is gonna be in big trouble. Do you know Braille, Mr. Swanborough? I'm no expert, but I learned it in my spare time, yes. Why? I found a strange document entitled Cure for Blindness. It's written in Braille, so I thought perhaps it was yours. Really? Is that some kind of sick joke? Let me see. Here it is. This letter seems authentic. And it actually refers to an experimental cure for blindness. You have piqued my interest, Dr. Reed. Could it be of any use to you? No. This page is just a part of a larger diary. I'd be glad if you could find the other pages. Yeah, all right. So when it said one out of four, it didn't mean that there are four people who are blind. That's what I was assuming. It means there are four pieces of the diary. Okay. So maybe we could help him out. Goodbye, Mr. Swanborough. I'll leave you now. That'd be pretty nice. Okay, so how could I find these? Do we have search areas that are going to be given to us? Nope. Alright, that's something we're either going to have to hope to find or we're going to have to look up. What can I do for you, Doctor? Uh, I guess I have to get the rest of them in order to turn them in, because it looks like Goodbye, I have two Mr. out of four. Swanbra. I'll leave you now. All right. Wandering in this part of town at night, you're either brave or a fool. Don't be mean. Okay, I just talk to you. Loretta's letter. My dear brother, this is the apology letter you'll never read, for you've lost your sight because of me. I know you hate me for what I did, even if you never say so. We don't talk much in the Swanborough family, do we? So, to clear my conscience, this is my bravest gesture towards you, to write you this letter, and to leave it in your laboratory. If you ever find it and ask about it, I'll read it to you. If someone else reads it... Well, as I wrote above, this is my bravest gesture. So, Mason, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did and for the hell you've been thrown into. I'm sorry you're now a blind man trying to find a meaning to your useless life. If I could change one thing, only one thing in my miserable life, it would be what happened one year ago. I swear it, Mason. If I could give my eyes for you to see again, I would. But it does not work that way, does it? So please, my brother, forgive me. Ah, did she cause his blindness? 
I wonder why that is. It said accident, so maybe he lost his eyes in an experiment gone wrong. Vampires feeding our soul. Uh-oh. Where is that? Let's see. Here we go. Modern leaflet printed on cheap paper. Vampires drink our blood, but they feed... Uh, uh, wait, okay. Vampires drink our blood, but they feed on our soul. How could we believe that any man or woman killed by these foul creatures, bitten by their foul mouths, could be then be accepted in heaven? No, their bodies have been defiled and their souls have been corrupted. Their place is now in hell with the legions of blood-sucking demons. Vampires feed on our souls. Clarence Crossley. For more information, please contact me directly. Vampires are real. Defend your community. Tell me, how do you see the world these days? Hmm. With an intense hunger. An intense thirst. But don't worry. It's just for, for a, a traditional amount of sustenance. Which is basically biting every single fucking person along our way. If we gained XP for every single person that I bit, we'd be maxed out by now. Damn it. Did it again. I need to be more patient with my strikes. Now, there should be. Oh, hey, Rogue again. Surprise! <laughs> Anyways, there should be the Pruin, like, priests over here. Ooh, look at that. Got another good trigger part. Thank you, Ekans. That sounds like the Pokemon. Ekans. Ekans. Kill enough Pokemons. Oh my god, did you see my eyeballs pop out of my head there? That was terrifying. You kill enough snake Pokemon, you can upgrade your guns. Okay. There we go. Now, <laughs> solid metal gear. We have a maxed out gun. I just have to figure out if I want to give myself stun points or... Bullets. Now, to be honest, five stun points versus an extra 60 damage, or well, 50 damage. I think I think I know what I want. Okay, so I need rivets, which is the only source of rivets I have. So we might have to look around. We saw that we could buy rivets from Edwina. So that's something I'll just keep an eye out for. What else do I need a lot of? I could honestly sell the ink pen, the Swanborough cordial, the perfume bottle, the cigarette cases. I could sell a lot of these. The only thing I can't really sell a lot of would be the box of pills, maybe? What do I need to craft this stuff? Codeine, pot potassium, permanent, uh, permanganate? I hate, I hate. All these words. <laughs> I hate them all. Yeah, no, I definitely need anything that can get me opium is necessary. A box of pills are good too. I can probably sell the rest of those. I'm just trying to see what I can sell. Which I think I can sell pretty much everything else now. So let's see if Lady Swanborough will have. Oh, shit. Some rewards for us. I didn't know there was an entrance down here. Alright, so if I press... Left on here. I can swap back to my other weapon. And then aim at a target. And blast them in the face. Let's see how quickly I can kill a guy. Oh, boy. <laughs> you cannot win this. 
Wow. That is very powerful. Although it operates a little bit differently than what I thought. Sorry, that just did so much damage. I wasn't I wasn't expecting it, even though I should have been. Okay. So we do have one problem that I didn't really realize. This is a shotgun that fires both shells at once. So this is actually a very costly weapon to use. And I didn't I did not know that. Ah oh, shit, this place doesn't have an ammo box. Damn it. All these times I've walked by ammo and have them stored. And now I can't do anything with it for now. Ugh. Fine, whatever. But this is helpful. Very helpful. From the looks of it, maybe I should go for regeneration when we upgrade our health and healing items. That'd be good. But yeah, chunking out a vampire's health in half in a single shot is pretty nice. That's a good way to initiate things. I'm gonna have to be cautious about ammo, which also means I'm probably gonna need to upgrade my... Uh, my ammo capacity, because that's gonna be what helps me out the most. Let's see what we can do. Good evening, Doctor. Do you have anything I can talk about? Christina Popper claims she sells her body because she can't find any other work. Do you believe her? Of course I do. Her story is exactly what I want my readers to understand. We live in an intolerant and divided nation. Do you think things will ever change, Mr. Darby? I believe the situation can only improve. And now that women can vote, I'm convinced things will change. Alright. I was hoping something... <laughs> I was hoping to get something where I could ask him a hell of a lot of other questions, Goodbye, but Mr. fine. Darby. Farewell. I wanted a hint that would lead into 15 other hints. Good evening, Christina. Change your- No, I haven't changed my goddamn mind. I just want to see if there's anything I can talk to you about. Okay. Good. Hello, father! Good evening, Mr. Whittaker. It's Father Whittaker, my son. So, are you still lost in your rational delusions? A little bit. Look, I need to treat you for Don't fatigue. Don't you fear getting sick yourself? Faith gives me all I need, my son. If I must fall, then so be it. Look, if I give you free medicine, just say that God gave it to you. No doubt your faith will prevail. But let me give you some extra protection against the devil's work. Medicine. Blessed be your generosity, my son. Thank God. All right, <laughs> he didn't try and like fight it off. I have found Samuel, your disciple. I am afraid I have bad news. I already expected the worst. He should already have come back. He is dead, isn't he? Yes. He is now. The epidemic took him. Samuel steadily made donations to our cause. He would have rewarded you himself if you'd found me in that awful cemetery. Please accept this money. Oh, well, thank you, Father. I, uh... I'm glad that you're so sympathetic about this. Tell me the reason why you despise Joseph Larrabee so much, Tobias. A faithless shepherd is the worst criminal, for he leads his flock to the abyss by disregarding the right path. God smote this man, for he doubted. I only met him briefly, but he seemed a dedicated man who tried to provide guidance. Do you not believe in punishment, my son? I am not talking about the law of men. I am talking about judgment from heaven. <laughs> God won't ever be my lord! That is an aggressive thing. Uh, I believe in science. We are our own judges. I mean, I want both. I believe in science and we're our own judges. I believe that we are, as men, our own judges, juries, and executioners. Armageddon is upon us, Dr. Reed. The final battle 
where every soul will be weighed. I'm afraid yours will burn for a long time. <laughs> well, as a creature of the night, I, I really can't refute him too much about the possibility of us burning in hell. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences, and most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. But you are seeking answers, aren't you? I think we've Answers asked them this stuff already. Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. Well, I suppose I can spare a few. As a doctor, you must what do you Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, we've gone down this path. Why did you send Samuel to the cemetery, Tobias? What did you see there? I sent him on a vision. A dream of a dreadful and laughing queen covered with blood, sleeping with the dead and feeding on the fear of the dying. Ooh, that's enough! Goodbye! No, I want to know more. A laughing queen dressed in blood. Tell me more. This epidemic is her feast, the announcement of her return. Against her, science is no more than a child's toy. But who is she? She is the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. She is Babylon, drunk on the blood of the saints. Okay. That's interesting. I wonder if that has something to do, because beforehand, we, we've heard about a queen before in relation to this epidemic. I, I want to know more. Your disciple. Samuel stole from the dead in Stonebridge Cemetery. I have proof of his crime and proof of his death. No! Samuel was the best of us. So devoted, so zealous. He gave all he had for the cause. He tirelessly preached the good word. And he defiled the dead. <laughs> what is he going to say? Oh, okay, that was just confirming this. Tobias's crusade is funded by his apprentice grave digging activities. Yeah, sure. He defiled the dead with his petty thefts. That's how he financed your misguided crusade. Think what you will. When this city is saved, he will be praised for his devoted fortitude. He walked boldly into the mouth of abomination. Your precious Samuel used you. He was an immoral crook. <sighs> if that's true, then he will be my burden to bear during this endless night. Right. Okay. Look, I want to I want to know more about the fact that you're also a murderer. Tobias Whitaker, confess why you burnt those people alive. I have done what no one was ready to do. I will smite the flesh of the unclean to protect the righteous. You are just another heartless murderer, exploiting the epidemic to kill with impunity. No! No. The only way to contain the spread is to strike at the source itself, the proliferating sick. Yeah, I mean... To be fair, if the disease was properly quarantined and handled, we wouldn't have to worry about it spreading too much, but, uh... I think it's gotten to the point where you can't just go, I need to burn people to, to save... You should never get to that point, what the hell? You're not the savior of London. You're just a glorified sadist. I take no pleasure in this awful cleansing, Dr. Reed. I am only driven by the thousands of innocents I save each night. Right, okay. I I was hoping we could really confront him about this, but I guess we can't. How is the sanitary situation evolving in Whitechapel these days? Don't you hear the trumpets? The apocalypse is upon us, Dr. Reed. The final battle. How much do I need to mesmerize him? Five? Mm, yeah, okay. Can I try to... Oh. I was like, can I mesmerize him and just fail? You can't. I, I just pressed enough the bumper. Tonight. Goodbye. Ugh.
Hey, are you sick? He has fatigue. Look at that. Everyone has fatigue. You here. again? What do you want this time? What do you got? Nothing to ask. Here, Can I medical check up. My medical expertise, Mr. Peterson. Keep your medicines for others. No. There is a thin line between pride and stupidity, sir. Please take this medication. You'll feel better. All right. I'll take it then. It's not like I don't appreciate the gesture. Huh. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. You know, it's funny because the father wants to burn out people. And if he burned out every single person in the city, he would definitely kill the vampires. Fire is bad oh, for us. Please, I don't have your money. Come. Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? But it's still pretty terrible that he's doing right. that. Okay, so he sells rivets. Uh, and everything else that I might need. The problem is that we could get these rivets for a little bit cheaper. So let me let me treat him and Fancy then rest. You never Do you need help, sir? To be honest, I'd prefer you take a look at my stuff. I'd rather be rich and sick than the contrary. <laughs> don't worry, I'm giving it to you for free. I don't quite agree, but I won't argue with you. Please take this. You'll feel better. Really? Free? <laughs> don't take it personally, but charity usually comes at a price. Human nature being what it is. Well, to be fair, that uh, it's not he's not wrong. How is business around here? Business? I have no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. Oh, is that true? Joe's extortions put Barrett Lewis in a tough financial situation. I definitely need to help you out with that. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit. And no sign of the bottom yet. That, that's what it means to be bottomless. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me. Came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever. Madness. Something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Ooh, an investigation! Have you been hurt? No, but that's only because I ran like hell. Those men were raving lunatics, I tell you. Not even able to speak anymore, just screaming. Yeah, those are skulls. You're very fucking lucky to have gotten out of there. Alright. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. So... By... Healing him, we're gonna make this district better for us, and it's gonna lower the cost of things because people are so happy that we've helped them out. So, in the end, this is actually costing him money. For us helping him like this, but I'm not fully sure just how much we're gonna be lowering the price. Who the hell is this? There are a lot of people I haven't talked to in Whitechapel, so I apologize, but it seems like we're doing a whole other thing like the East Docks. This is despicable. 